So in this last video on the problem of suffering, I'm going to present a really common uh, <clears throat> a line of reasoning in response to the problem of evil that Rhoda doesn't cover. I thought it was important just because it's become so popular um, and uh, of a, quite a hot topic in philosophy and religion in the last 20 years. Uh, so here's how it goes. The argument, premise one, says if God exists, then... Uh, God would not allow the vast amounts of suffering, okay? And somebody says, well, uh, I mean, maybe there are some reasons why God would ha allow for that suffering, okay? Now, imagine somebody trying to say is, well, probably there are no reasons why God allows the suffering. I mean, we can't think of any, right? Like, um, uh, the, the free will defense only goes so far, but... Uh, and even after reading Stump and Rhoda, you might find, you know, these aren't very convincing. And at the end of the day, um, there's still a lot of evils that they just think can't be accounted for by free will or love or the, the evil purging us, as Stump says. Um, or they're just not convincing. Okay. Uh, so there's another trick that the theist has used, um, a trick that the theist has up their sleeve, I guess. Uh, so they say, all right, so it sounds like your reasoning is like this. Uh, okay, uh, this isn't the reading, so I'm just teaching it uh, in this video. I can't think of a reason why God would allow evil. Therefore, probably there is no such reason why God would allow evil. That seems to be the way you're reasoning, isn't it? Uh, the theist can say to the atheist. I can't think of a reason for why God would allow evil. Therefore, probably there is no reason. And um, they might say, yeah, sure. I mean, no matter how hard I can think of it, I can't see why God would allow that cancer or that abuse or whatever. Um, okay. Um, now here's uh, the next response. Um, and the people who uh, give this sort of response are called skeptical theists. Uh, I'll, um, and I'll explain why in a bit. Suppose you're on a camping trip and <coughs> so, uh, you brought a dog and you're wondering where the dog is. And somebody asks, hey, can you check if the dog is in the tent? And you go, oh, you're okay. So you take a look. You can't see the dog. And you go, hey, dog's not in here. So the reason is something like this. I can't see the dog. So probably there is no dog. I can't see any dog in the tent. I can't see a dog in the tent. So probably there is no dog in the tent. That seems like good reasoning, right? Yes, it is. We should think it's good reasoning. Uh, now, also, um, in nature, there are these little bugs, tiny bugs. They're called noceums. A noceum, uh, it's called a noceum because you can't see them. <laughs> okay, so let's say somebody asks you, hey, take a look in the tent. Are there any noceums in the tent? You open the tent, you look around, and you go, I can't see any noceums, so probably there are none. You reason like this. I can't see a noceum, so probably there is no noceum. There, there is no no CM. Okay, now here's the thing we should conclude. This reasoning is good. This reasoning is bad. Okay, um, you can't you can infer in this case, but not in this case. Why? Because you would expect your cognitive faculties, your cognitive abilities, to be able to detect a dog if it were in there. But the fact that you can't see it. Uh, uh, is good evidence that there is no dog. With respect to the noceum, though, given your visual abilities, your seeing abilities, your cognitive faculties, you wouldn't expect to be able to see the noceums even if they were in there. So the fact that you can't see them is not good evidence that there are no noceums. Now here's what the skeptical theist says. Now there's no room on the board, so I'll just write it here. The skeptical theist. Okay. The skeptical theist says this. Well, let's look at this reasoning and see, is it more like the dog case or is it more like the no CM case? And they're going to say, I think it's more like the no CM case, not like the dog case. In the no CM case, you wouldn't expect your cognitive faculties to be able to see or detect the no CMs in the first place. Now, the next response is, why well, think we as finite creatures would have the ability to detect God's reasons for allowing evil. It's, it's not like the dog case where we would expect to be able to see the dog if there were a dog there. But given that we're finite, we're way lower than God's uh, intelligence, uh, 
we shouldn't have a reason to to know why God would allow certain evils. I mean, I don't even know why like some normal things have. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot that happens in the universe that I don't know about. Why, why uh, God would do this or that if there were a God. So why I think I would be able to see that in the case of evils. Right, so that's the skeptical theist response, and it's been uh, widely debated in philosophy religion, and I wanted to make sure you guys could think about it. Now, there are some issues with the skeptical theist response, and I want you guys to try to think about what are some objections. Uh, and I'm going to just point you in one of those ways. One of the problems people have had with skeptical theism is it seems to maybe make humans a little bit too low. I mean, don't we have a little bit more grasp than the skeptic of of the goods and evils there are and the reasons God might have. Um, don't we have a little more grasp than the uh, skeptical theist is saying? Um, well, that brings us into a lot of other deep issues. How much knowledge of uh, good and evil and the reasons why God might evil might ha have for evil? I mean, how, how much do we expect ourselves to be able to know? So uh, that's something worth thinking about. We'll have one last video um, and we'll be done.